Crouch. Bind. Set. Joe presents the House of Rugby, together with Guinness. Hello, welcome to the House of Rugby. I think we're in for quite a lively hour over the next hour. <laughs> that was smooth. That's why we pay him the big bucks. <laughs> Brought to you by Joe, together with our very good friends at Guinness, who have delivered once again this week. The house is back. Mm-hmm. Little Happy. Bit, little bit angry at yeah. the fringes. Can't get a game. Uh, Tins is alongside as well. How are we doing? You happy? You all right? I'm always happy. Good. Yeah, you'd be happy if you lived in a castle. <laughs> and got, and driven a, in a carriage everywhere. Yeah. Oh. Last week you arrived angry and we put an arm around you. Mm-hmm. This week I'm finding it harder to do that because you are angry is at a sort of different le- mm. level. Are you, are, you, are you very angry at the moment? Not very angry, sort of mi- middle of the road angry. Oh. I think it's because off air you're, 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 you're coming across now like now the red light's on, a bit like Lawrence Dalio does when the light's on. You've changed persona. Yeah. Um, you from, were coming at me. What? What? Well, he, he was kind of like bravado to emotion, like instant tears. Yeah. You've gone yeah. for from arsy, chippy, posh schoolboy to friendly, like, you know, kind of agony on. Host of the House of Rugby. Yeah, you're condescending and patronising and you were mugging me off on the um, on the link, so <coughs> that's why I'm pissed off. Um, I mean, Todd, to intro the show, I thought I'd done that. Welcome to House of Rugby, brought to you by Joe together with our friends at Guinness. Could we also just extend a very warm welcome to our new friend? Who's that? Annika Rice. Uh, Annika yeah. Rice, unbelievable scene. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show, Annika. Yeah. Forever a friend. I'll tell you what I saw the- as well, talking about tweets. Someone tweeted me as that ultimate uh, dinner guest was myself, right? Yeah. <laughs> Brian Moore and Clive Woodward. I was like, I'm not turning up to that dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, like, you can invite us, make, but make, I ain't. Make, make sure you don't tell me the guest list I reckon, you invite me to that I dinner. reckon Brian and Brian <laughs> Moore would fight me by the end of it. Clive Woodward would just yeah. walk off. Yeah. And that person would be having a nightmare. I just don't think that's a great combination. No. I'd be quite, a dr- quite, quite a dr- fun to watch. Quite, quite, if you put you in a glass yeah, box, yeah, yeah. you could yeah. sell tickets so, hey, to watch yeah, that. It'd be quite it's a dry end like of the table, and me. It's like a snake, an iguana, and a bat. I'm a bat. I'm not saying you are. I'm just I'll be a motherfucking like... tiger. You've got a rat and a badger <laughs> and me, a tiger. Quite, I think you could pitch that TV show. It'd be quite a good one. Put completely opposite end of the spectrum people in a, in a room and make them have dinner and then video it. Oh, and then yeah. film it. Opposing political views yeah, and exactly. stuff like that. Yeah, that'd be dynamite. A Nazi with someone else or something else. <laughs> keep it light. Keep it light. No, just <laughs> keep it light. Do you know what the best bit is? I won't mention it again because last week got cut out, but if you notice my team that I put together of 70s and 80s celebrities is missing a fullback. <laughs> <laughs> and it's busy a fullback because some absolute vagine right in the editing department panicked and took it out. If you want to know who I said, then come up to me in public and I'll tell you who it is. Don't come to like don't surprise me. <laughs> I know I know I know, like Kato. I know, I know I'm 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 as Ross would I'll say, literally karate. punch you in the throat. Um karate. but if you want to know, come and ask me because I will happily tell you who my fullback was. Mm. But they panicked, didn't they? Took him off. Yeah, I Bollocks. think I think they wanted the show to continue yeah. into other. Why? Of course it would continue. Of course yeah. it would continue. It was. It wasn't that controversial, honestly. I didn't advocate anything he was doing. I just apparently it wasn't uh, the name. It was what you then said after it. Yeah. What? Then no one gets past him. <laughs> 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 Very true. And anyway, I guess crack on with this show. I'm, you know. I'm actually a little bit worried about Why? where we're going to end up tonight. I mean, there's, yeah. there's a fury about you that there we haven't been, experienced. We've had sadness, we've had elation, <laughs> we've got fury this week. But you know, it's, it, there has been a whole roller coaster of emotion. It certainly has. But it started when I did that rant about Sir Clive Woodward and, and the stuff, and I haven't calmed down. No. I'm worried that I'm just getting like one of those opinionated like ex rugby players. If one more person asks me if I'm fucking retired as well, they get throat <laughs> punched. <laughs> <laughs> Someone says, How long have you been retired? I'm like, I'm not retired. So when you do so much extra, extra. <laughs> yeah, put, put your teeth Fuck in, that, yeah, take yeah. three. Mm. Um, I'm being told to move on to the topics that we're going to discuss. Right. On this week's show, we're going to ask what on earth is wrong with France. That could be quite lengthy. We're going to look at whether Ireland had discovered a plan B. That could be fairly brief. We're going to reflect on a fantastic win for the Red Roses. And after the success of last night's BAFTAs, uh, in the perfect pour this week, uh, we're going to go with Hollywood, Hollywood actresses. Mm. Which I think is going to tell quite a lot about the three individuals at this table. Um, do you want to start with the rugby, or do you want to keep on sort of venting and therapeutic? <laughs> no, I'm happy. To, happy I'm happy to share. I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm happy still to thinking on. that you're not getting picked because you haven't shaved oh, no, the head oh, no. and the beard. That's what my mum said, didn't she? She was. Uh, do you know what we, I told you we had a conversation yeah, about that. She goes every you week until you do it. You just got to do it. I know, but I haven't had time. You're not playing any rugby. What do you mean you don't need time? I what are you doing? Yeah, I thought, yeah, it doesn't work like that. It's like when, when I first <laughs> the, got injured. The, the smutby lo- London has <laughs> taken a lot of time. <laughs> it's like when I got... It's like, <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> Wait, control, like, alt, delete. Control, alt, delete. <laughs> first time I got injured, Chloe turned to me and went, oh, I tell you what, you know, at least we'll be able to go away. I was like, Chloe, it's not how it works. You, you, no. I'm literally in every day battling. Yeah, really. Battling away. Nose to the grindstone. That's all you can yeah. do, mate. 
You've got to do. Just got keep battling away. Got to keep trucking up. I tell you what, I had a great story though. I had a great amusing day. One of the, the I won't mention his name. Lad stood up. Go on. And I'm not known for my my dress sense, but this bloke told a story about how he used to get he gets rib for his clothing. Like people get into about shit gears, dressed like grandfather. Is this at Saints? This is. A, well, yeah, international. And, no, and um, and he uh, it's like guess who? Yeah, yeah. And he basically said flipping Brown hair. down goggles. And, yeah, <laughs> and, he, and he said uh, he said what he decided to do was to go out and buy a chain. Yeah. So he thought he'd buy a chain would detract from his terrible kit setup, yeah. and then he went out on a night out, and a, and a girl kissed him and pulled him towards it and uh, broke the chain. And then one thing led to another, and then he made a buy, buy him a new one the next day. <laughs> Unbelievable. The youth, the youth of today. Was more, I was today. mortified. But, oh, but if you've got is. shit gears, the last thing you do is buy a chain yeah, to accentuate it. Unless, just, you wanna, unless you're LEG. Yeah, but or, even or then. Mr. T. Mr. T. Yeah, but even then. Like, if you've got... Te- <laughs> right, I mean... I ain't getting no plane crazy fool. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's what happened with B.A. Brown. Could that be any, be any further I'm, I'm, I'm from it? I'm six centimetres into my Guinness. <laughs> and I saw a B.A. would hang out really well. Yeah. Yeah. You'd have yeah, something to talk know, about. Opposite so track. Track. Well, who's your favourite polo player, <laughs> B.A.? Um, do you enjoy fencing in your spare time? <laughs> what chucker did you... Uh, <laughs> B.A. would just, BA would just <laughs> go and fold you up. He'd yeah. just go, whoa a bum you'd be dead. Yeah. Are you as grumpy as this in Northampton, or do you have to wear a smile and pretend that you're still sort of? No, no, no I have a lot of fun. Yeah. Honestly, I love. I, Why I, are you bring your anger here? This is like a sort uh, of because it's an hour and a half. It's an hour and forty minutes in the car, and I'm working in the car, and there's no one to talk to. Like, I so just get a bit. Another reason why you should up. get the train. Cheer no, up. I don't do train. <laughs> don't do. Train. <laughs> I do. I do. Yeah, I do. You've changed. I definitely don't. You've changed. Unless it's the Orient Express, you can fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> The House of Rugby sponsored by the Orient Express. Oh, oh good news. Good, then, good news. You know the first product thing we talked about? What? Some people are sending us some notebooks. Are they really? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I bloody hope we get some Harley Davidsons next week. Yeah, Harley Davidsons. I bloody do that. <laughs> um, anything else you want to mention? We'll Just in the you. hope that someone might, other than... Oh, I've got an space. iPad. I've got an iPad. Yeah. Or, or, a game. or a game. Or a game. Or a game. Any, game. Over any championship Apple giving away a freebie. <laughs> any championship <laughs> club need a player? Yeah. Um, <laughs> right, I'm going to have another run up at trying to talk about some rugby. Right. Eddie Jones has fired a few shots. He doesn't take long, does he? No. He has said off the back of the game, uh, he's picked up on Warren Gatlin's comments of a few months ago where Warren Gatlin said, the difference between the teams right now, England and Wales, in terms of where we are and where they are, is poles apart. And Eddie, like an elephant, has got a long-term memory. And he came out off the back of the game against the French and said, mate, if I remember the comments, we weren't doing so well and the gap between us was massive. Let's see how big the gap is next Saturday. Which I think is quite a clever little... Just, it's just a, sort of a little match to the firelighter. It's going to mm. burn for a while. Is this pre-planned? Is, this, um, is, he, is he playing his game of chess here and starting off the psychology? Or is he just pumped off the back of hammering the French? I think I think I think there's there's history of both of those guys playing mind games. I mean, Eddie's back to his best because he's winning again, so he can say what he wants. I think I think you put them all down to us. Has said you just, he's just throwing grenades out there. Um, you know, he's used the we're playing the best Welsh team ever yeah. because they're on that the run of. Is Which again is very clever because Gatlin can't say we're not the Welsh team ever, the greatest yeah. Welsh team ever, because otherwise you're doing a team down. But if he says we are the greatest Welsh team ever, he's so he's sort of painting him into a corner a bit. Yeah, um, and and if you watch the two Welsh performances so far, they're definitely not the the no. best uh, the best team ever. But that's not to say they, you know, they made a lot of changes last week probably to rest people up for the England game. Um, so you don't really know what they're going to come out with, but you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. Is that uh, is, he, is he playing? Yeah, I think of course he's playing. I think he's. I think everything with Eddie uh, is premeditated. Unless he's really razzed up, unless you go, unless he goes mad, yeah. like if you ever look one, any of those sort of old Japanese kind of press conferences, when he's like uh, really emotional, when he bollock the captain, yeah, 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 when, it, when the bloke was like smiling, footage. when he's like smiling, he's like, that's oh, the problem, mate. Yeah. That's why you're smiling. Like, and he says that. Like, Have uh, you ever seen that in, in no, England camp? No, that's so what he's I, never lost no, his, no, his rag. No, no, and that's what we said to him. Like when he, when he, I think we. We've been there maybe about six weeks in camp or something um, during the first station. He's like, Hess, mate, how are you going? And I was like, I'm really good, Eddie, but I'm really worried. And he's like, why? And I go, because you haven't gone mad. And I feel you're a bit like an atomic bomb and I, uh, it's going to go off at some point. <laughs> and he goes, nah, mate, that's old, Eddie. That's not what I'm about now. And I was like, okay, but you're still on edge. Like, he, <laughs> it, like I, I would... I don't know. I just don't want to ever upset him because I, I know he can go nuclear. So we just don't do it. And, and to, to my knowledge, I think a couple of boys have got it, 
but never to the team, never in front of anyone. He's he's never he's never bollocked anyone. He's really honest. He's a chill out entertainer. Yeah, he's a chill out. He's really honest and direct, which is good. Yeah. And he changes it like he'll say, oh, you know, to, to to you know to work on these bits and that bit. But no, he has never exploded. So I'm a big believer that he's an extremely intelligent man, and he he thinks very clearly about what he says a lot of the time. Yeah. And I think that Warren Gatland is probably the coach that um, equally loves throwing grenades out there. I remember years ago he, he did that with Dylan. Yes. Said that Dylan was a fanny and that all the Welsh boys wanted to beat him up outside in the, in the outside the stadium and he didn't turn up. Funny that he didn't fight everyone out of the stadium. I'm not sure <laughs> he can really do that in the, no. in the modern game. Um, Dylan, so, Dylan was man of the match off the back. Dylan was a man of the yeah. match and played really well. So, so Gats likes to do that. I, I think it's just you've got two weeks build up. I think they're both you know, throwing things, throwing stones and just hyping things up, yeah. bringing that emotion, hoping that one of them will slip up. I mean, I'll never forget that Michael Checker during um, the World Cup uh, 2015, went well, um, was um, <laughs> I saw him on the field and I went up to him and said, like, Checks, how are you? And he goes, mate, how's Ben Morgan? How's Ben Morgan? And I said, what do you mean? He goes, oh, he's just, he's written my pre-match speech for me. He's written my pre-match speech for me. What an idiot. And, uh, and it turned out that Ben Morgan had, had said about Wales, uh, about Australia reliving the nightmare at Twickenham for the scrummage and all that kind of stuff. Oh, Basically, yeah. they got man shamed, and all all Michael Checker did was just pin that newspaper article Ooh. up in the changing room and said, you know, the English think you're fucking man, getting man shamed. You know, you think you're all pussies, da da da, and they all just came out and battered us. So that was so. So I think he's Does hoping. that work in this day and age? Is that pin it on the nose. Yeah, yeah. We had, we <laughs> Does did, it really? Well, we had that in Australia. <laughs> so that Australia tour. You'll always bring it up though, won't you? Yeah, yeah. We had that in the Australia tour. So we genuinely. Um, when I went out to Australia, I'd never toured Australia. We're sitting down, and uh, I think Dylan, in, in a kind of captain's meeting, played the reporters um, like. Are you that bored? <laughs> yeah, he's like messaging. No, oh, I'm just careful. <laughs> sit the table over. I was just going when he's finished. I was going to tell you a story about when we went to Wales, and obviously the fans started throwing stuff at the bus, oh, um, ah. and then sort of Clive and the doctor sort of got off. Well, uh, to get through the crowd, our bus basically ran over a supporter. Oh. Um, and we had then. Had was that, did they break a leg? Or something, and they had to get off. And we sent the doctor off to so. And then Clive went down. And at the time, you know, Jason's got his shirt open and he's pinning fifty-pound notes on his chest <laughs> for all the, the Welsh fans just to calm them down. Um, and then, literally, everyone's like offering us out off the bus, and we saw, we thought about getting off, and then we saw Clive had got off, so we like shut the door, let's go. Um, <laughs> I never know one. But yeah, because that's what the, he wants, isn't he? He wants to stir it up so that the fans get into it, and then yeah. it makes that cauldron. I was there when when you lost in what tw- was it 20, 2013, 2013, yeah. 2013, and I ended up having five Welsh flags draped draped over me as I was sat in the stand as people were walking. You just got to take and, it, and, and you know, I had nothing else to do but nice. just to sit there and take it. But well, so I'm in Australia. Yeah, so, 20, so, so, so basically, 16. They recorded their equivalent of like the rugby club. Where yes, they recorded <clears throat> a, a VT of um, them basically going that last time England came here they never won, and there's just a. a a screenshot of like six or seven people just laughing hysterically yeah. and this one guy laughed throughout this entire video so it'd be a clip of us getting battered him laughing a clip of us getting battered him laughing um, you know and they went they haven't got even got Sam Burgess to pin the whole thing on and blame him and they went really you know what Australian yeah. press is yeah. like they went really nasty and all we did was play that and I, I've never been more like if I did <laughs> that or we did that as a British media it would be nuclear but yeah. again, because it's just Australians, everyone, oh, you know what they're like. Um, so they're fighting for audience share, aren't And they? that's what I mean. But we'll, but then we that was the most sole motivation. It was like, all Dylan said was, they, they don't respect us, they don't give us a chance, they're rude, they're insulting. What more motivation do you need to get them into them? Do you ever do that with, or did you ever do that with fellow players? Do you ever say, take someone aside and say, have you, have you heard what they've been saying about you? Or, uh, uh, or do you not need to do I'm that? Not gonna, well, no, I think you do, for sure. You, you know, it depends on the player as well. If you know yeah. that he's already read it, and you know, and let's say he's slightly psychopathic anyway, you probably don't need to do it. Wind yeah. him up. Andy Hazel, Jeff definitely don't need Jeff, definitely don't need to wind him up. But there are certain people that, if they're more, they're quiet. Mate, you've got you just go up. You mate, you got to prove yourself. If they're if they're doubting you like this, I mean, some people would have said it about Johnny May, not obviously at the moment, but no. you know, he's quite quiet, flies under the radar. Quite a strange, strange kid. <laughs> Very strange kid. The ch- uh, we've talked about chicken trapped in. Yeah. Um, what yeah. is that? I, I don't know. Possessed by a chicken. Yeah, basically. Um, <clears throat> I was saying I told this story the other day. The fact that he we did a secret Santa. Yeah. 
and <laughs> and uh, he basically bought someone as a secret Santa a chicken, a live chicken, wrapped it up. He wrapped up the chicken uh, in its cage. Oh, I see. Up, but left it in his car for like a day. And it oh. just shat everywhere all over his car. <laughs> uh, you know, he probably didn't feed it. Or... He's like the worst God. weight spotter ever, like Johnny, because he like gets into this zone that because he, he he works hard, <laughs> like he lifts, he, try, he tries to lift hard, but then when he's finished his set, he just goes and walks in a circle. And you <laughs> might need a spot, and you're like Johnny, and he's just walking in a circle whilst he's waiting for his next. <laughs> he's got a <laughs> thing though, isn't he? He's on a spectrum. Yeah, right. legit on a spectrum. Like if you ask him, he's on he's on yeah. something on that path. Yeah. So. I think it's quite a good story. I mean, everyone's making like out Henry Slade, obviously credible player. He's got diabetes, so he's a superhero. Johnny May literally doesn't know where he is. <laughs> so <laughs> he's borderline completely mad. So what he's achieved, forget the diabetes. You've got someone who doesn't know. He yeah. thinks he's probably at the zoo visiting some <laughs> sort of animals or something like that. Um, but no, we he's, he's got a great thing. Where he, <clears throat> it's, people might be pissed off around. He goes, he goes, there's good news. There's bad news. It's just news. Yeah. So, yeah. It's like... <laughs> No, but that's what he comes up to me. He comes up to me, goes, Hass, what do you think of that? And I'll go, oh, it's not great. And he goes, just news, isn't it? We're like, just news, Johnny. And he just goes, tick, tock, tick, tock. Just does that with his head, but he makes a noise. Like, <laughs> walks off, doing it all the time. And I come over and go, oh, it's not great, is it? Your shoes got He went, yeah, just news, Hass. <laughs> and that's it. Just, 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 is, he one of, is he brilliant to yes. have around Cam? Yes. Yeah, he is. Yeah. He's, he's such a lovely guy. Like, I can't, I can't, and also, incredible. Like, how fast is he? But I told you, he's like Forrest Gump. Like, he, I've seen him run into stuff like sides of marquees, down <laughs> banks, into, into, he ran into the end of a golf buggy, cut himself, cut his arm because he couldn't stop. Jumps up, like, knees you in the head, jumps up, everything, <laughs> just runs up, could perfectly catch the ball, almost punches it yeah. backwards. But, but I, you talked about the, the motivation thing. Just go back to that quickly before we move on. Gats used to do that with me and Lawrence. Oh, yeah. So when I was 18, uh, we used to do something um, at uh, what's called Power Endurance. It's now come like a common thing. But essentially, you would do eight, uh, eight exercises in the gym, eight rounds, then go outside and do wrestling, down and ups, shuttles, uh, something else. And he would come up to me, and, I, and I, Lawrence and I would do it at 7.30 in the morning together, right, yeah. one-on-one. And basically, um, Gats would go to Lawrence and say, uh, has this young spunker, he thinks you're shit, you're old, like, he, he said that he's better than you, and he'd come up to me and go, oh, Lawrence, who's slagging you off, doesn't think you've got the balls to make it, doesn't think you've got the minerals, da 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 So, I'd be like, bah! and obviously, <laughs> we would then go out and wrestle, right? And obviously, because it's fitness, if you're both wrestling and trying to win every single time, it just extends the whole thing, <laughs> and you're literally like, you know, like young kids on the dance floor, like, 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 like sweating, pissing sweat, can't, you know, be dancing to, to, to exhaustion. It was only then halfway through, like week three of doing this, I, I, I let Lawrence win one and I could see his eyes light up and then I was like, right. So I would win, win one, he would win one, we'd have a good wrestle and then he took me for breakfast. Nice. It's just unbelievable, yeah. That Very was the happiest day of his it life. Was. Yeah, it was. Dear diary, my hero <laughs> took me for breakfast. Didn't make me pay either. Because apparently they didn't take blockbuster cards or Visa, Visa, Visa <laughs> electrons. He had a deal with the yeah. cafe. Yeah, he probably did. Probably. Face of the Eggs Benedict. Um, <laughs> it would be Eggs Benedict. The lol breakfast. The lol Just breakfast. Lol. Stick it all on. Um, did, G- did Gatlin ever go bananas on the Lions tour? Because um, I remember off the back of the first test, he, he like it was all the hype, all the excitement, clobbered, and he was really calm. He said, fix a couple of things. In the post match, I do fix a couple of things. I think we'll be all right next week. And we're like, <laughs> good luck good. with that. Yeah, but then obviously it came round again. But did he? Did he ever? Did, did he ever blow a gasket at wasps or or at the lines? He blew. He blew. He blew a gasket at wasps uh, a fair few times. Really? Because the thing, the thing that um, that makes Gatland, uh, I think, such a good coach and has had so much success because his record speaks for himself is that he. Uh, understands how to put together teams in a, in a short period of time. He uh, ultimately um, wants to work you really hard, but give you freedom as well. Yeah. So so he, he has that kind of nice balance, but he wants you to buy into everything and he expects players to buy in. So he wants people to front up, have that real physical edge. I remember my first training session in Poland, um, I ended up having a fight with Trevor Leota and I punched, I punched, <laughs> I punched <laughs> Trevor was cheating on them all. I came out of it, I punched Trevor once punched Trevor twice we fell down Trevor just did one straight punch split my eye split my cheek he didn't even look anywhere but but Gats came up to me for the next five days and just massaged my shoulders there's my boy there's my, loved it loved it loved the fact that I'd done it and um, and just he wants that from his players yeah. so 
I think if you if you toe the party line like that, then he's great. But if you go against it, I remember some bloke didn't want to sign uh, for for Was, and his contract wasn't up, and he just came stood in front of everyone and said, "This guy doesn't want to sign, doesn't want to be here, so we're sending him home, doesn't want to be part of it," and just sent the bloke home. And the same thing, he came up to me. I think it was a negotiating tactic, but he he came up and went, "I'm speaking to your agent. Apparently, you want forty p a mile for mileage for club appearances. You know, if this is this bullshit, you don't have to fucking sign. You can leave if you want to." And I was like, freeing up my agent seventeen. I was like, "I'll take the deal. I'll take the deal." But that's what Gats does. He's like, he 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 expects unequivocal buy-in, and then you've got kind of short the emotion so yeah. Gats doesn't need to you know on the Lions tour he, he obviously <clears> controlled <throat> it but he's got Andy Farrell the emotional speaker yeah, and, he, and he's great at putting a team together around him that helps facilitate his view so he watches everything from the top but he gets key people in to do the talking for him but he does speak but he's not like you know he's different Eddie in that respect and Bobby Stridgen Bobby Stridgen. What a legend what a legend a lot of the rugby world won't know about Bobby Boucher Bobby Boucher <laughs> Rob, mate. the rope mate he was a Commonwealth wrestler. Yeah. Unbelievable. Oh, the, when he came, to, he came to Gloucester once. So he's he's the health of his um, fitness so, guru. Yeah, so uh, now in Wales, fit, fitness Esk guru he still England. does some stuff at Toulon. Yeah, um, randomly bumped, uh, <laughs> randomly bumped into him on a plane back from France. Uh, he's such a great guy. He's such a good guy. Um, and uh, so he came down to Gloucester. And no one knew who he was at this time. This is right at the start. Yeah. He was when before, just as he started working for England, and. Um, we just had a sandpit put in. Which fucking idiot <laughs> decided to put a sandpit in? Oh, let's get less injuries, so we'll wrestle on a sandpit instead. How about so, not wrestling? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're doing re- we're doing wrestling as backs, and then we're we're an odd number. So Ollie Barkley was left without uh, uh, like no one there to do it, and uh, Paddy went, "Oh, Stridge, can you just jump in and re-? and but you could see Bart. This guy's fifty two kilos, dripping wet. He's yeah. like Bart's going." What's the fucking point in this? And literally, it was the worst hour of Ollie Barkley's life, spending his, basically his <laughs> whole hour with his Head face in the, sand. in the sand. Literally, like, he was the seven right. stone weakling. It was it was just ridiculous. It gets, it gets up, and he's like, absolutely ball-bagged. He's like, yeah. who the fuck is that guy? And you go, oh, yeah, he went to the Commonwealth Games as a wrestler. But, but, he's like... Bob, Bobby, he, he... People would take him on, like, Graham Roundtree would, like... You know, like you see him have a bit of a wrestle, try to get Bobby to ground. Bobby would just like slide underneath, take him down. He'd like, he'd, you just see all the big lads would try to take him on at some point, and he'd fold them all up. Well, they did but that he, on the Lions, didn't they? Yeah. They all stood in a circle, all the forwards, and they all had one go. And I think it took eight of them before he was that fucked. Yeah. <laughs> Someone got him on the floor. And he's permatanned, he's permatanned, yeah, yeah. salt and pepper lid. Yeah. And he's probably a, one of the most well endowed people you'd ever meet. Yeah. It's called the rope. It's called the rope. Yeah. Honestly, I've, I see. Yeah, but you yeah. saw the rope. But so much so that when he was younger, this isn't like a weird dodgy story. When he was younger, I think when he strips off after wrestling, his coach went, "Bobby, has your dad seen that?" <laughs> <laughs> because because it was like that, that was mega. Honestly, I've seen. I've, I mean, my, my he's gone even higher in my estimation. He's unbelievable. Yeah. Honestly, I'm not sure whether you tell stories about what he used to do in the gym. Matt, you, I don't think you can tell that. I'll tell you a few things. Because he's rope. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, he's rope. So I was doing bench press once, and oh. it was a really heavy weight, and he just came and smacked it on my face. Yeah. To psych me up to lift this weight. <laughs> I'm like, Bob, I just don't need that. Oh, I don't need that, that in my life. If you're injured, is rope's magic? So if he hits the injured area with rope, it fixes so it. Can, it's a sort of like a last uh, Oh my god, mate. he does a whirlwind. Oh yeah, honestly, he does a windmill. Yeah, Holy Moses. Yeah, but he, so he comes over. He goes, "Ask me, how, how is your elbow?" I'm like, "That's a bit bad, Bob." He goes, oh, "Rope will sort it out." And he just hits <laughs> rope on it. Honestly, two days later, you're back fixed. It's a medical miracle. <laughs> and he loves seven second sleeps. <laughs> Yeah, he literally, he literally, pa, pa, I had the best sleep. Seven seconds, I'm straight back into it. But, but he's always Seven like, he, he's who such is a that hero. actor that he looks like Rob? What's he called? Schneider. Yeah, yeah, he looks yeah, very yeah, like Rob yeah, Schneider. Yeah, he does, yeah. yeah, but he's the it's best thing about Robbie, uh, Bobby is that he like he's one of those unknown heroes in world rugby that I guarantee if you asked any professional player who's been on a Lions tour, any of these teams, they would always say they know him. No one's got a bad word to say about yeah. him. He's normally caffeined off his boot like his tits. <laughs> and he's always like, whilst he's walking around going, right lads, Vit C, Zinc Lozenge, um, all on planes, always trying to make sure yeah. the lads were taking things. Oh, Viper always turbos, smells- keep the wolf from the door, beat it shots. Mate, always honestly. smells good too. Always smells good. He can name a woman's perfume, <laughs> any woman's perfume, Perfume. He, I actually think he would have made a better juice bigger than yeah, he might well have done. Try, no, he was the original. Bobby, you need we to get listen. T- yeah, we, we, we should get him on. <laughs> oh he, my he god, he would be amazing on it. Can we have Bobby Boucher on? Yeah, please, we've got to get Bobby Boucher. 
if you're listening, it's mate, an open invitation. Yeah, you, need to be on. you might have to do the lasso trick. Uh, <laughs> he could knock a Red Bull can off, a full Red Bull can from 40 yards. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> genuine, genuine. Red Bull can, edge of the desk. Yeah, he'd get rope out and he'd wang it, and it would fly across the room. I reckon it would. I mean, my I don't know, my little button mushroom would just really snap off, <laughs> <Button mushroom. laughs> like a triangle. Uh, there's probably, the headline for the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. It would probably pierce the can. Tight. Oh my Make god! Sure you got that. No, it's not. I got. Decent piece, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear the producer sort of coming up with other show ideas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, got, we're going to take this in the sporting arena. Oh. Courtney would be quite useful. Uh, oh my yeah, god! Yeah, yeah. I, I can't believe we're talking about this. Times. I shared a room with a few times. Honestly, quick, quickly it, into it, bed. It, it, oh no, <laughs> casual. No, no, no he's him, casual you, you. Oh, I'm yeah, I'm into bed, but he's yeah. got a real laissez-faire attitude to wearing clothing. Right. And every night at, at eight o'clock, without fail, <laughs> doorbell goes. Club sandwich. Courtney just bowl straight past the room. Go, the room goes dark. <laughs> I'm like, ah, make it go away, and he just gets the club sandwich, smashes it in, and that's it. That's all you need. Is that you smashing you, the club sandwich? Is, you, is, is that a euphemism? Yeah. We, we're talking about a no. Club. He actually yeah. right, club okay, sandwich. Perfect. It's not like you a weird could, thing uh, where we're into. You could do a good show on naked roommates, like naked yeah. your worst roomies and oh, uh, naked ones. I reckon that would get. Some I saw Peter Brack in naked once. It was, oh yeah, that would be. That was, is that, would that go into the good or the bad? No, oh, one of the worst things you've ever seen in your life. Right. <laughs> I love you, Peter. Out. But you know, Peter. Let's Peter Brack did a uh, did an MMA fight, so I better be careful in case he beats me up. Yeah, right. Do you, he, would you fancy your chances? No, probably not. No. I reckon be okay. You don't want to talk it up in case you. I, I might have inadvertently accidentally offered out. Um, uh, who's the big second row from South Africa? Uh, Oh, oh yeah, Ebenezer. Yeah, yeah. Ebenezer. Yeah. On, on Twitter, someone said I'd love to see yes. that fight, and I was like, oh, I'll have a go. And he wrote, <laughs> and, and he replied thirty seconds later, I'm in. I was like, I've been hacked. Yeah, I've like, been hacked again. Okay, I'll fucking do it. Yeah. You're watching the House of Rugby on Joe together with Guinness. Um, first of all, France. What a lovely photo of Chloe Thank you. On your phone. Thank you. I took that. Did you? Mm. Artistic. Um, well, I mean, where the hell are we going to start with French rugby right now? I saw Philippe Saint André last night at an event. I mean, he, we had I bet a, he's got some great views. <laughs> I bet he's got we, some we good had ideas. He's had that. his chance. Yeah, I know, but he was. He just said the whole thing is rotten from top to bottom. Yeah, of course it is. It's, uh, is that it? it? Are, we, are we ever going to see French rugby smile again, no, or look, is it just disappearing? We, took, we off the sort of sli- slightly touched on this, and I was with Tom, uh, Thomas Lombard on the weekend, and we talked about when Clive went over three years ago. As much as people <coughs> have, in England would have hated him probably going over there and doing it, he's the sort of only person character who, he might not be great at the actual coaching rugby side, but he would have organised the French Rugby like Federation to deal with the clubs in a better way to help the national team succeed because it's not set up that way. The clubs don't really care about. Well, I think it's. French. I think it's apparently it's actually worse than that. The clubs don't like the FFR. Yeah. And the FFR haven't got enough money to. So, so to when you up. when you've got that, you, you are f- you're fucked. So they when they first met up for that first game, they've had no. T- they've had th- four days together, and some of them are really young. Probably have never even met some of the older guys. So how are you going to put a team together like that? And then the coach, the genius goes and changes 10 of them for the next week <laughs> so you're like well how are you ever going to stand up all the young kids are actually standing up better than mm. the old guys that, per- that Pernod he's probably one guy who would get in would be close to getting in your team of the week because yeah. he, at least he, f- he tries all the time and he is electric scored a good try and actually looks like he cares I mean you bring back Bastro and you know what's he do it, it, it's almost impossible to see what they're trying to do there's a quote I mean the, the, the Times has picked up on it there's a quote that um, when Fiku was simbinned and Damien Pinot was temporarily removed for a head injury assessment one of the players said afterwards to Midi Olympic it was chaos nobody knew which position we were meant to be playing we were lost on the pitch and had to try and ask the bench but I'm not I sure. Mean, that but, is really <laughs> but, I mean, off the back of last week, and Varmahina saying I didn't actually know I was captain. But you see, the problem is with with Fred is you could see the players might have got together and gone right. We can get rid of this dude, or let's because who's French come play- in and make French, do a lot of that. French players are very good at just. So the headline of this article circling is that, the, the wagons for themselves and, pu- and pushing the guy at the top out. The headline is France on the brink of brink of rebellion after Morgan Parra criticizes poor training sessions. Hang on, and it wouldn't be the first time. Morgan Parra, everyone, yeah. Fuck, he got ran past by a seven when they put that kick through for Johnny May. I mean, he, he's, he shouldn't even be in the team. Everyone knows he shouldn't be in the team. So why is he speaking up? And everyone says that Dupont should be in the team playing ahead of him. And yet he's, 
like he just when they put that kick through. He didn't even try to run no. back. I know it was Johnny May who was running past him, but you still f- look <laughs> like you're making an effort. You're supposed to be a leader of that team. I'll be I'll be honest. I just I just don't see uh, people making the decisions that would help it. I don't yeah. see. It's very difficult, and and men are way worse in this than women. <laughs> about accepting responsibility, realising you're not doing things right and making the hard decisions. That's why when, when, when Eddie Jones came in at the RFU, yeah. I was really surprised that they picked what event, you know, was, was essentially a controversial person who would go against everything and cause and do what he wanted to do. Yeah. That's what you but needed. But that was such a reaction that against was, Stuart Lancaster. Exactly. But, but, but yeah, it was... That's, it, what, that's what Clive but, was. But, but the point is that it's... But like, they lurched. I mean, England have lurched from Clive to Andy Robinson yeah, but then, to Stuart yes, Lancaster. but that's what France has done. With France has done the same, the same thing. What you need to do, and this is where the risk is and why it's even worse in France, is that if Eddie had come in and hadn't gone well... Yeah. Would we have seen the rebellion? Because he went so well initially, because we had that unbeaten record, everyone was like, actually, what he says works. And uh, uh, he made some tough decisions. And, he, and he, he went against the norm. He rattled a few people. He didn't conform. Could you imagine how many times he's done press conferences and someone from the RFU shit their pants and gone, oh, you can't say that, you can't say that. And, yeah. it, and he's just, because he, he, he did it and he's done it in such a way, it, it becomes, it's not, it's not an issue. But there was, a, there was a moment when in, last, in 2018 when everyone started questioning him then a few people started coming out going, well, I, you know, I back him, but he's, I can't give him unequivocal he backing. He did Bruce Craig, didn't he? He called yeah. Bruce Craig yeah, the yeah, Donald yeah. Trump of rugby. Which is genius. Were, <laughs> even though I've never, I've never <laughs> met Bruce, I just think it's a comedy line. No offence, Bruce. You know. um, <laughs> Welcome on the show anytime. Well, yeah. yeah, please come on. Um, but <clears throat> the thing with France is they won't do what it takes because if, some, if you get someone controversial in and it doesn't go well, they won't like, stick with him. All the French players will rally around. They all think they're politicians. I've seen it firsthand. Yeah. I remember at Stade Francais, we didn't get paid. What, that's how the, how the club, how yeah. clubs run there. Yeah, but we didn't get paid at Stade for a bit. And they, were, they came and had a meeting, and they were all saying, right, listen, you know, can we give some money from our contracts? Can we do this? Can we do that? Um, to help do stuff. And it was like all the senior players started assuming this kind of mantle as politicians. Um, and that's the problem. And you'll see what they're like in the media. They start infighting. Whereas it, you need somebody that will be able to harness their French flair and ability with structure. There is no structure. There is yeah. no like reasonable game plan. There is no communication. There is no scenarios of like what happens if so-and-so goes, goes down. I'm not saying that England have got everything right. But all these teams have this in place. But French teams don't have it. Yeah. I think it starts way above the team. You know, the days of Blanco just lining his pockets with for money from look he was head of Biarritz and look where Biarritz are now yeah. he went he went into French rugby into the top of French rugby you know it's the they need to run a business at the top of the, the French rugby union and they have to then filter that through and have an agreement with the clubs and get the clubs back to liking them Look at an EPS style contract because it's the only way they're going to work. Yeah, it's the only way it can work because otherwise you're just getting no time <clears> together. And you, un- the days of you rocking up five days before a test match and then playing aren't going to work you can't against do it. No. the teams that you're going to play against. You know, barely even Italy. But, but, will, will but there's work a big against. thing in rugby, and we talked about it on the other show. We talked about professionalism. There is a lot of jobs for the boys, and a lot of people assume Alec because, you, because yeah. no, because you're a good player doesn't mean you're a good coach or a good manager or you've got any fucking clue about any of those things and the problem is is that back in the day you could do that because it was amateurish slash professional but it's completely different now business people need to make business decisions and have that experience people to manage business you can't put an ex-player in. you couldn't just go oh I'll, I'll quit rugby and suddenly do something it's like no no you've got to earn your spurs and there's no mistaking that some ex-players who've gone through earned their spurs done their bits and pieces have become quality coaches and the blokes who go straight into it who do it who get frontline jobs crumble because mm. it isn't like that and, mm. and, and that, that is a big problem of, of, I think especially in rugby we like to look after our own which is great but you've got to understand that just you've got to be good enough to yeah, do yeah, the job you've got to be good exactly. enough but also you've got to, want to put your hand up and say do you know what this isn't what I'm good at turning out week in, week out and training and playing and applying myself. Am I good at motivating, communicating, putting a game plan together, doing all the minutiae that people don't want to do? Mm. And that's why, you know, so much like, so I think you've got successful coach, you, you got put good people around them. But ex-players running things and doing stuff, mm. unless it's like a figurehead role where they come and do a few bits of talk, but you don't want people making executive <coughs> decisions or spur of the moment stuff because it, it, what the hell do they know about it? I don't know. I tell you who else was at this thing last night it was Joe Worsley. Yes. Who, God, he speaks well. I mean, what, what, I mean, just remember him as an absolute wrecking ball as a six, but he's got such a he's got a business head on him, and he was saying that 
fundamentally the problem for the French is they don't own the Stade de France, so they're rev they can't get the revenue in, which means that the LNR, or top 14, have got 50% more cash to play with. Therefore, they're the ones pulling all the strings. Mm -hmm. The overseas players is out of control. Saint-André was saying that in 2013, when Clermont and Toulon met in the European final, everyone went, my God, French rugby is so, it's so rich and so healthy at the moment. He could only pick eight players from the 46 in the two match squads. I think, but they're getting there now because they've brought this GIF rule in, which means you get yeah, rewarded they, for more French based players, etc. But then they also manipulate the GIF, apparently, in yeah. how they do it, in the fact that they. So the players who, are, who fall into that schooling um, don't really need to work hard because they get paid quite well. Exactly and they, right. And they're always needed. Yeah. So the, French, if, the, the value of the French players has gone through the roof yeah, because, as a result. Yeah, because they always need someone to sit. They'll always need a French backup to fill their squad. So even though they might still have the, uh, the main of their 15, will be overseas. As long as they've got these backup players who are all French who come through French schooling, mm. then they hit the, the, the Gif mark and they're fine. But then those players have got no motivation to go and actually play. Well, I'm never going to play in that team. So they don't really give a shit. They're getting paid well just to not actually improve and get better. And then even if they do get rid of me, some other team will definitely need me for their Gif. So I, I, you just move win, around win, and win. you don't actually do well, it. moves on. I remember Gif was just used for cleaning surfaces. Yeah. But it's all... <laughs> it used to be Sorry. Sif back then. Yeah, it, no, 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 it was no, Gif. It was Gif. Then it no, became Sif. Sif for some um, horrible European Sell it, reason. bang, yeah. bang. <laughs> the dirt is gone. You could do that. Bang, and your banter's right, gone with Alex. Yeah. Alex Payne, bang, and the banter's <laughs> gone. I think the banter was ever there in the first place. No, that's what I mean. It's no. true. It wasn't, mate. You're here to facilitate. Remember that. Yeah, I'm here to make you look good. Mm -hmm. And on some weeks, it was a lot harder than it mm -hmm. might seem. So yeah, French rugby is fucked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just, that's the original. But, but, uh, just if you're joining us right now yeah. on this podcast. But I, was, along. I am adamant that I think as individual uh, rugby players, I think they are the most talented in Northern Hemisphere. I don't want to disagree. Some of you know they offload their offloading ability, their ability to manipulate space. I mean, they created opportunities against England, but you know they just never finish anything off. It, uh, but it's the mental I side. I mean, they yeah. Are yeah so but we talked about it, it's the mental side as well. Right. You can't have all that emotion <clears throat> and all that. You can't have no structure, full of emotion, red bloodedness, and absolutely no mental side of it, yeah. and no because you just got nothing to rely on. Yeah. You, you know, and, and, and rugby, a lot of times, with my experience of teams, the mental side is you show a bad performance on the weekend, you go, why was that a bad performance? And go, well, we, we, you know, training wasn't right in the week and we weren't emotionally up for it. And the solution is, well, we'll train better and make sure you're up for it. That's like, no, you haven't fixed anything. You, yes. you just said work harder and do, you know, that doesn't work because you're playing 30 games a season. When you played eight games a yeah. season, you could play eight games a season on, on emotion. But you can't play. Like, imagine the turmoil of getting together in four, four days, trying to learn all the calls. Training sessions aren't any good. You're going away to England. There's probably not much preparation. You probably haven't learned the team for, until the night before the game. You haven't looked at the lineouts. And then you've got emotionally get up for it. It's very difficult, mm, you buff. know. Hmm? Buff. They're What's buff mean? Well, it's like a French sort of I don't care kind of thing. Is it? Yeah, they're playing yeah. barbarians rugby, really, aren't they? But they're playing well, against, they're very, well, they're playing against professionals even, who are, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who are <laughs> well yeah. organised and they can't do it against. Did you see the quite interesting footnote from Carcassonne this week? No. Carcassonne have announced that they're entering into a commercial partnership with the pornographic website Jackie et Michel. Are you a subscriber? No. No. Not yet. <laughs> On the grounds that they share I the values of power, sorry, endurance, and vigor. So Carcassonne are sponsored by a porn website. Is it? Is it? Um, is it? Uh, someone told me today. I don't know if this is the same story that they advertise tickets for a, a rugby game on a gay porn website, and they sold f four times as many. Really? Yeah. I mean, direct link between yeah. porn and rugby. It was yeah, advertised well, I mean, that the guys would not wear shorts. <laughs> That's probably yeah. I'd probably, yeah, I mean, I, but I think they would. It was, you know, it we, was a small detail. We could go back to the fifteen yeah, we were yeah, talking about yeah, Bobby Boucher yeah, as the yeah. trainer. Well, and, we yeah. did. Um, cool, you know, I did the, the Dur de Stade in, in Stade Francais, the naked yeah, calendar. Yes, I do. Yes. If you Google it, I wouldn't. If you're a lad, I wouldn't Google it. If you do, you, you want to clean your history because it's a bit aggressive. <laughs> um, but that was unbelievable. That was such a clever marketing idea. That's what I loved about Max Cuisini at at uh, Stade Francais. An absolute marketing genius. He was the first person to pick the pink shirt up. Now it's been done the world over. Even the, the, the Bulls did it in South Africa. Oh Imagine that, God, though. Yeah. I reckon there was a few stonings <laughs> in that airport. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand here. Why are you wearing pink? It's the shirt. It's the shirt. Yeah. Um, Dangerous. And then, and then Exeter did it. But then the, the calendar was the biggest selling calendar, biggest selling calendar in Europe and the biggest selling gay calendar. It was unbelievable. 
Good. You still handing out copies to those? those uh, I don't know. I haven't been invited. So many all. bad stories around that Shawsy yes. stories. Shaw's is amazing when he came up. Yeah, mine was pretty impressive. I keep my. I think the Evans the brothers circuit. were the favourites. Yeah, right? oh, yeah. yeah. That, but that's yeah. just too far for me. Yeah, that's that probably a bit professional. <laughs> Check out what we mean by googling it. <laughs> Good. Uh, Ireland. Plan B. Yes or no? What bring on Joe Calbury? Yeah. And play what he sees. Yeah. I mean, I thought he was great when he came on. I think. Um, ultimately, it was very Irish. Um, they got ahead through Scotland's mistakes and then... Parked the bus. Pretty much if Jose Mourinho was the coach, yeah, they parked the bus. They just played one-out runners, kicked it in behind them. Found a win. Found yeah. a win, though. And actually, I really enjoyed like, the first half. I really enjoyed watching. I thought it was a great game. It's a heck game. of a first 40. I thought, a dreadful <coughs> I thought Scotland had... had Played it perfectly. <clears throat> it was interesting to see how what I did sort of, was how intense England had been the week before because Scotland had sort of said that we're going to learn from that, but their line speed was nothing compared to what the pressure England put underneath them. And then that's when those inside balls came on when Stockdale scored um, because they they were just repeatedly just going chasing at chasing and chasing. And yeah, then. They, obviously, the first try create their own. Second try shouldn't have been a try because I think Hogg should have had a penalty for when he kicked that ball. And penalty and yellow, or just a penalty? No, just a penalty. Um, I think Omani should have had a yellow for when he killed the ball five yards out from their line. He's uh, got a very good emerge from the ruck stare, though. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Hands on hips. Um, mm. Well practiced at that. Well, I text him saying, you know, you know, his favourite thing is Mal, 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 referee, it's a Mal. Right, that's all he shouts yeah. when he because he loves the, yeah. the the catch tackle they call it. And I just said to him, "Is it even a mall if Peter Omani isn't shouting? <laughs> it's a mall referee. That's his like power skill. <laughs> if it was a top trump card, yeah. line out nine, shouting a mall ten, <laughs> ten, ten point five, ten point five. Yeah. Did he respond? Yeah, he, he stuck. A, he sent me a smiley face and a middle finger. Oh, good. Yeah. Good friends, rugby friends. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's obsessed, obsessed, obsessed with his lawn. What? Yeah. Oh my god. Like, no, like, I'm talking. Like he play, he's an incredible player. Um, he is borderline a serial killer about his his law. He can go into our fifteen. He, he, yeah. we, we are buildings. We're buildings yeah. quite diverse fifteen. Can we, can, he, so can we do a show where we'd get you to take a JCB over there and that's take what it I mean, to his no, lawn? That's what, that's what Sean <laughs> the in the Sean cab. O'Brien drives up, gets handfuls of gravel, and fucks it onto his lawn. So when he goes, he mows it. He mows it like four or five times a day. You know, a well, day. Not a day, sorry, a week. He does all. He treats it like it is literally like Lords. I'm talking. It, it is manicured. It's like he, bowling green. Yeah, yeah, he, I, I, yeah, yeah. And he, he's not. If the kids walk on it, that you know, they're taken in hand. Like no one's allowed anywhere near it. It's that, perfect. But the lads will turn up and throw stones on it. So when he whizzes it over, they'll try and dig it up. But he is. He'll shoot you. Well, we're talking about sh shows hilarious. on tour. You should turn up in your whites and green. Well, I, 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 I take my bowling gear. Peter, apparently, it's been incredible lawn though. Like I'm, I mean, I don't care about lawns, but when even I, oh, when I saw it, you dig your beard. You know, yeah, oh. so you can see that. Huh. You see the rest of my body. Though. It's like it is like a lawn, <laughs> manicured into different shapes. Yeah. What do they call it? Topiary? You, is it topiary? Yeah, topiary. That's like that's yeah. like ba bonsai, banzai trees. Yeah, bonsai, bonsai, yeah, bonsai, bonsai trees. trees. Um, banzai, something very different. But it's um. Yeah, so I'd like to go and see it. So it would be quite funny just to run out there with a garden fork and just pull, pull some of it out and run off. That's how I'd get into his head pre and international if I ever got back, but I can't get into the Saints team. So probably not shot. <laughs> we laugh, but it's my career. We're going down the toilet. Yeah. Right, never mind. How fun, how much fun we had at James' expense as no, he retired we're, into we're, oblivion. We're trying to keep your pecker up, if you'll forgive the expression. We have to do more than just look at me keep my pecker up. <laughs> We need to get on that smut that, group again. Yeah, um, we need to get you onto Jackie and Michelle. Uh, Jackie, Jackie and Michelle, yeah. yeah. What is, is it a bit? What is Jackie and Michelle? I don't know. Let's have a Google. I bet you Jackie and Michelle's English traffic soars off the back of yeah. the show. Yeah. I'll have a little look, actually. Um, TKO, first of all. Here's a little something from our friends at TKO. Have a listen to this. Cheers, Alex. Uh, I'm Chris Lloyd. This is Carl Frampton eating his way slowly towards the middleweight division. Uh, we're going to be here every Thursday talking about the big issues in boxing, getting stuck in uh, with, spe uh, with special guests, behind the scenes interviews, um, and of course, snacks as well. Um, tune in every Thursday, podcast and on YouTube. Thank you very much indeed to Chris and to Carl for that, sharing the love with the other Joe shows. Right. That was a little insert there, which we didn't <laughs> actually insert in this show, but will be inserted in the post. I honestly edit. didn't uh, know what TKO no, was you, until I looked I've at never, the board. I've yeah. never seen You're both Hass looking. Right? So, I haven't seen Hass looking that confused since uh, <laughs> well, I thought he, I lost he, played, he played Italy two <laughs> years ago. I thought I had a stroke. I was like, since I can't. I don't it's the power of television. I have to tell you, I have to explain <laughs> I to you I afterwards. can't hear anything. <laughs> I really am going to have to retire. <laughs> 
Uh, a word on the Red Roses. Felicitations to the Red Roses, who scored <laughs> yeah. seven tries and crushed the French 41-26 in Doncaster, which was the big game of the Six Nations. 5,000 on hand to watch. Some quite exciting stuff happening in women's rugby at the moment. There is. Do you, also, do, you, do you see many of the women on the tour and on the circuit? Or no, Chloe doesn't let me. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, no. I um, we do. I do. I support them. I follow them. Um, I've done some stuff with them before. Yeah, rugby related things. Um, and um, <laughs> important to carry I actually out. really yeah, enjoyed yeah. their. Uh, they did a thing on social media because now. You know, like social media and sport, yeah. obviously everyone panics around what you can and can't say. Do they swear? Do they be edgy? But actually, I think the RFU's now kind of being slightly less Relaxing militant, a little bit relaxed. Little... Like we're talking like 2% <clears throat> relaxed. And they did a feature with the girls and the common questions. Which was very good. Very good, yeah. The it common was questions Emily that... Scarrett and... Vicky, was it Vicky? No, it wasn't Vicky. I'm not sure. Vicky. I'm not sure. But it, but I watched it and it was uh, really interesting. They are all the stupid questions yes. that we, female robots First question was, are, are you all lesbians? Are you all lesbians? Yeah. Um, you know, do you have to... Oh, it's Mo Hunt. Can Mo you Hunt. Yeah, Can you she's, Mo she's good. There's, there's, there's quite a lot of good girls. They're all good girls. They're great fun. But I, I think um, England, as is a, is a, is a first team, should do more with uh, the girl team. Like if it, or just like a training session or do yeah. stuff. I think yeah. quite good because they are still a bit separated. But they, they kick ass. I mean, they're World Cup winners. Yeah. Apart from... Uh, 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 Maggie Alfonsi, she she did me in the eye in the papers. She yeah, she did actually. She did me in the eye. Fully told she me. She said it was the last thing again. Yeah. The awkward thing oh, is, it's awkward. she's not actually. Right. I know. I know. She said you need to get rid of me. I actually mm. played one of my best games for uh, even though we lost, but never mind. Did you? Seems that you so, may yet come again. Seems that Lazarus had a come back. You know, you can so, pop, yeah, park so, yourself alongside him. Because she uh, did me, but never mind. I Katie Daly McLean broke the. Break the record. Right? Yes, at the weekend. And then, how fast is that winger? Was it? Is it Smith on Just the? Breach. No, Just the Breach? No, the other one. Two. Kelly Smith on the other yeah. one. She, she had a she had a Johnny May moment, didn't there? It was yeah. a little grubber through from thirteen. Was it? it was Scarrett playing thirteen? Yeah, uh, yeah, I think she was. I interviewed Emily Scarrett for my my YouTube channel. Actually, the oh, videos on my YouTube channel. If you search uh, the James Haskell on YouTube, what? Uh, it's not. I, listen, it's when I was. The first set up Your website is the No, James no, no. It's just YouTube. It's called James Haskell Health and Fitness is the channel or James Haskell TV. Yeah. But the actual username is the James Haskell because it was something you I refer to. James Haskell was already person. taken for some reason. So I'd put the James Haskell. Or, or just go to jameshaskell.com, which might be more. No, no, it's not on YouTube. No, who, who's got James Haskell on YouTube? I don't know. Probably some kid in Nevada. Maybe I registered and forgot the password. <laughs> I don't know. Probably some rat bag. I don't know. You probably trademarked and blocked out all those things. Do um, you do a segment on the show of the comments we get? Like our top comments. Do you know what I was thinking that? Yeah. Let's do a top comments thing. I've not read one of the We've comments, had I don't some, know. Somebody put last week, they said, Alex certainly is a pain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a lovely piece yeah, of work. Yeah. Pent- on that bombshell. Yeah. Hmm? What? Mm-hmm. No, I'm just saying. I think you probably... Yes. You, need, uh, you, need, this, you need to deflate your tyres somehow. They are right on edge <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> an angry I man. will kill you. No. Time for this week's Guinness Perfect Pour. Our weekly test in 119 and a half seconds, because that is how long it takes to pour the perfect pint of Guinness. Um, we're picking up speed, I think. You're, you're, are you enjoying the perfect pour a little bit more now? Yeah, I mean, because you're all involved and you've let me know what it is beforehand, so it's not a complete yeah, thing. Give me the answers first. <laughs> uh, so last week we did... No, but last week we did 80s TV presenters. I just about managed to avoid all things Operation u The week before we did superheroes. This week... We are going all BAFTAs, and we are getting you to pick your Hollywood Actress 15. Be careful. <laughs> Keep it a family show. It's not a family show, is it? No, it's probably not, actually. Not. Increasingly less so. Uh, away you go. Okay. Number one, Kim Kardashian, because she's got a big dumper, and, uh, <laughs> and she will be able to... I'm just going to repeat that. Hello? Be careful, <laughs> and keep it a family show. <laughs> The bat. Well, she's got. She's not uh, Hollywood, right. though. No, she's appeared. She's done cameos in movies. Okay, fair play. Uh, and she's appeared in a couple of her own home movies as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, on um, Julian Michelle or whatever just, it's called. This is a message. Uh, now, this is, obviously, this podcast I assume is listened to by a lot of men, but just dangerous any, assumption. Yeah, well, I think it probably might be, but if it isn't, women. Please stop getting arse implants and stop mm. fucking around with your eyebrows. Mm. Men don't like it. You mm. look ridiculous. It's mm. stupid. It's a silly fad. Please stop doing it. The Kardashians being a prime example. Mm. Um, terrible fake bum. Uh, number two, <laughs> Melissa McCarthy from Bridesmaids. Nice. Yes. Chunky bit of kit that would like... <laughs> no? <laughs> Too much? Uh, uh, Rebel Wilson. Just Rebel start Wilson. The car. Uh, yeah, yeah, Rebel yeah, Wilson. Yeah. Just, keep, yeah, just keep, uh, it, keep it. Grace Jones. Good. For, athlete, yeah. Uh, yeah, for athletic nice. ability. Uh, Bridget Nielsen. Very good. Oh, Thank very you. Well Welcome. Done. Yeah, she's that. Um, tall. Sliced the legs. Very good. Um, yeah. So, Caitlyn Jenner. Yes. At, at strength six. over the ball. Um, <laughs> 
Jennifer Lopez at seven because she's fit as fuck and fit as fuck. Do you know what I mean? Like she she's double it. You like you know looking how, at her. You, know how, yeah. you know how last week we didn't. You didn't get your fullback. Yeah. yeah. This week it's going to be here's my fifteen. <laughs> cut to tins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Jennifer Lopez because she's athletic and strong. Yeah. Right. Gwendolyn Christie is number eight. No idea. Uh, the um, tall uh, uh, Amazonian woman from Star Wars. You know the tall blonde one, very tall. Uh, the one she's the, um, the no head stormtrooper lady. <clears throat> People oh, will know. Okay, people oh, will the know. The new, 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 new Star, Star Wars. Wars. The, yeah, yeah, the yeah, youth yeah, of today yeah, will know. Yeah, yeah, yeah they'll know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, number nine, Sandra Bullock. Why? Why not? Speed of service. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. a bomb on a bus. Wait, yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you do? Uh, Meryl Streep because she's experienced, knows like her way around yeah. it, like you know, seen it all before. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, Ronda Rousey at twelve. Mm-hmm. She's been in Expendables and she's hard as fuck. Yeah, and she literally, if she came, I just do as you're told because she will kick your head straight yeah. off. Like she'd go through you like a Japanese paper wall. <laughs> There'd literally be an imprint of her. <laughs> she'd be very welcome to. Honestly, she'd <laughs> fold you up like a travel map and pop you in a pocket. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Mich- uh, Thirteen, Michelle Rodriguez because she's a tough lady. Uh, yes, uh, she's in SWAT. Yeah, yeah. Badass. Yeah, uh, Linda Hamilton from uh, oh, her Terminator. Yes. Yeah. Very good because she's yeah. like badass. Um, Mila. Mila Kunis. No, no Mila jo- Jovovich uh, from, from Fifth, 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 Fifth Element Fifth and all the Resident Fifth Evil Element. films. Yeah. She's yeah. fast as fuck, bio enhanced mm. and gnarly. Yeah. Gnarly. Um, and then Angelina Jolie at the back, just managing shit, as you would think. Sort of the Lara Croft version or Mr. and Mrs. Smith version? Nah, well, both combined. Both combined. And she's great at like, she'd get those dive tackles in, you know, great under a high ball, great at leaping. She's got it all covered uh, for me. I think that's your best 15 so far. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, it probably will be the last it's one. It's the first think, one he's actually remembered to yeah, do in the yeah, car, exactly. though. It's the first yeah. one to put some time into. Yeah, 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 funny that. But I mean, because I got fucking told what was going on. <laughs> As you do every week. Yeah, yeah. No, I didn't. You're just dialing in a bit more. You had a WhatsApp group that you forgot to invite me into, so I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> what is James not playing? James has left it. the group. Yeah. Mm. Mike, are you, re- are you ready for your run up? Yeah. Well, I, it would be quite fun, actually, <coughs> to get someone to build an algorithm whereby we could feed in our ultimate 15, well, could, mm. and then they could sort of play each other in a round-robin tournament, and we could have a, a champion play, team. Well, you know, like play you, each other at Jonah. Uh, you know, like yeah. Jonah Lomu <coughs> Rugby, they used to... If you Imagine could, if you could build a Hollywood actress Jonah Lomu yeah, game. But, mm. uh, first of all, Jonah Lomu is still the best rugby game of all time. <coughs> yeah, I agree and, with that. And if you know if you complete it all, you've got those, those special rounds, yeah, like yeah. Codemasters and something else. The two brothers, the but, Ma- Mather brothers, yeah, the but, huge fullback who just yeah, literally yeah, handed them the little... It was the old double that made it to McCabe. McCabe, that giant guy that was so good that was used to be able to run round the post yeah. twice and sc- like score each end and the bloke would keep running <laughs> like we should do that with this kind of team someone out there invent a rugby game where you can do this mm-hmm. James Haskell rugby you know like champ manager we could do fantasy thing with it where the computer plays it so they don't have to go and invent the graphics but yes. we could put it in can we just quickly reference uh, match point predictor yeah, we're, we're I've given up why, why do we want to do that why do we want to do that because well, have you yeah, he's, he's not, not even in up, he's he's not not even two and a half laps behind everybody else <laughs> and I'm second last yeah, well I won a pint last week that's all I was happy about mm-hmm. well you still haven't been invited into the group with no, everyone else no, that's no, sort of oh shock it's like, it's like this whole thing with House of Rugby I'm not right into anything Tins your Hollywood <laughs> actually star and I'm treated like second uh, second, second fiddle star in my own high five my team yeah I've got Roseanne Barr at one very, not going not to argue with her if it tough, I wouldn't because yeah. if she does she'll mug you off on Twitter yeah. but she's not allowed to say anything she'll yeah. just claim she was on medication yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I got a yellow like... card I popped too many pills <coughs> that that Nigel Evans wrong. that um, I've got Julia Roberts at two obvious reasons yeah why tall for she's, a two she's a good hooker <laughs> I, I teed him up for that don't look as if I didn't you know you knew what he was talking about you said he was what? tall she was tall as a hooker you don't know anything about rugby you can tell because you're a Bath fan but carry on uh, I've got Queen Latifah at three. Powerful, not, go, not going powerful, back. Powerful. I'm sort of seeing like a Census Johnson comparison. Yeah. Can I say that? Well, you did. <laughs> you did. <laughs> powerful, 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 powerful. Powerful. Strong. Okay. Well, is that your phrase? Just tidy it up. Yeah. Tidy that shit up. Cut yeah. it out. Uh, Uma Thurman and Charlize Theron yes, in the second yes, row. Yes, yes, Um I've got Angelina Jolie in my back row. Yeah. Uh, anyone who carries Billy Bob. Thornton's blood around with us got to be a little well, bit Well, used to. Probably, can't do it anymore, probably not anymore, yeah. Ronda Rousey at seven. Very good. Um, just Very dominate. like Marley Packer, actually. Dominate. Ronda Rousey. But Scarlett Johansson at eight. I think, you know, she brings uh, Avengers stuff to the table. Should be good. Scarlett Johansson's on my list. On your well, laminated list. Or just your laminated list. On my laminated oh, list. Yeah. I've asked, so, like, that, that's legit. <clears throat> so, if Scarlett Johansson, if you're interested, 
<laughs> we had Annika Rice getting in touch last week. Imagine if Scarlett Johansson got in touch this week and said, well, thank you so Annika much, Annika Rice on my list yeah. if you need to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Annika's that. listening. <laughs> Annika's listening. Yes, that's, Is she? Uh, we apologise for that, I, I, I used to fancy Annika Rice back in the day. Did you? Uh, not to say she's not pretty now, in but that, I just... In just, that sort of blue... Action yeah. Chevron yeah. I, I wanted to like leaping out of the helicopter, out of the helicopter to build the helicopter, yeah. the, uh, the hedgehog yeah, underpass. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I just wanted it to help me just get to ride a digger, but now I've got my own JCB, so I don't need her anymore. No. Right, okay. That's a bit harsh. Uh, Pocket Rocket at nine, so I went for Salma Hayek. Yeah. Or you know, she can't be mobile with them. Yeah. <laughs> boots. <laughs> yeah. With them weird She's got feet. the high top boots. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, it's tricky pass. Poor it's tricky pass. Hey, can't get she wouldn't be able to get off the floor with the chest. Yeah. There's no. Um, do you know, do we found out that she's like the second? What was she? Second yeah, most, sixth wealth, most wealthy sixth, sixth woman in the world. Wealthiest woman in the world. Selma Hayek. Yeah. yeah. Seven billion or something. Shut up. Oprah Winfrey the most. Yeah. Or that bloke. I'll tell you who is. This is not. This is not. I know feminists go mad, but there's that woman who's just divorcing the Amazon guy. Jeff Bezos. Yeah. He. She immediately becomes the richest person in the world. Well, 127 woman, richest woman. woman, sorry, 127 billion divided by two. <laughs> She's cash money. <laughs> uh, I've got Letitia Wright. Obviously, we started with BAFTAs. Letitia Wright won the best uh, Very good. up and coming. I literally don't know who that is. Um, she played. <laughs> Why would you do that? Don't agree with I'm, him. I know, but I'm hitting uh, Black, Such Black, Pan- Black Panther. Still, uh, still girl who does all the tech. Oh, yeah. Um, Lovely stuff. Uh, I've got Beyonce on the wing. Fast feet, uh, dance moves. I'd have to do some crash shape. ball centre. Well, I thought about yeah. going that way, but I went for F- F- Famica Jansen. Who's uh, that? Uh, she plays um, Bond Jane girls, Grey. No, Grey in... Uh, oh, she does play a Bond girl as well, but she plays uh, she plays on the top in Bond. Yes, you're yeah. right. <gasps> but she plays Jean Grey. What's her name? Oh, God. She, she's unbelievable. She's on my list, yeah. Chloe. <laughs> let you know. How long is your list? So, yeah. <laughs> pretty extensive. It's, it's a big database. <laughs> imagine, it's it's imagine, a spreadsheet. <laughs> imagine Encyclopedia Britannica. Like, I keep meeting people putting my list. Chloe's like, no, no. Meet the postwoman. No. Can't. Oh, <laughs> she basically went on the list because she's an X-Men and she's supposed to be the most powerful oh, She's unbelievable. So, uh, I've got Hilary Swank at 13. Love basically, the outside break. No one is getting through those two. Titan. In defense, yeah, yeah, they are. I've got Halle Berry on the other wing. Why not? And then I've got <laughs> <laughs> Cameron Diaz at fullback. She's sporty, she's good yeah, fun, classy, like a Rolls Royce, like an Andre yeah, yeah. Joubert. Oh, the Andre Joubert. The Andre I think Joubert. she could do that. I'm really old. Well, you know, I've, you gone, know that. I've gone Hollywood. Cla- how old this, are you? How old I'll tell you what, you know, when how old are you? Uh, uh, 40. Okay. You know when I'm nearly 39. You, you know look when at the you, difference in the paper rounds. You know when you uh, say oh, you can really judge someone's character and personality of this. Yeah. Go. Yeah, but do you know what it is? Is that this will sum you right up because yeah. you're oh, old school. Oh, yeah, I'm, but I'm sum, happy. I'm happy. This will old sum up school. how much of a public school yeah. boy and his upbringing. Okay. Whoopi Goldberg at loose head. Okay. Don't mind like that. It. Don't Marilyn mind Monroe at two and Sophia Loren on my tight head. Lovely. That is a strong Sophia up front. Sophia Loren. Yeah. yeah. On your tight head. Yeah. So I'm judging already. She's like a Robert Paparan board type character. That <laughs> entire sentence. <laughs> that entire sentence is what is wrong with this show. You've literally alienated everyone. Farquhar, no, we will, don't know what you're fucking talking about. There will be people about. out there who go, God, he's cultural. Listen, His appreciation of 1970s French rugby <laughs> is what makes this show what it is. Listen, you're the kind of bloke who used to hang out in Cafe Can de Paris. Can you just let me do my bar. 15? Okay, well, I, can't, I didn't understand Stop the whole sentence. I thought you were I thought you were trying to do I reckon you've just thrown up in. There. Just, yeah, um, yeah. You tried to modernise it. Yeah. yeah, it's like you put French windows on a council house. It's still a council house. What? <laughs> it's what it's that thing with with um, what's his name? Matt Berry. There's a very famous video that goes around a thing where he, he helps women, and he's like, w- "Woman's walking along," and he walks along, and he goes, uh, "This woman's looking at a thing," and he goes, "Something, something in French," and she goes, "Oh, what does that mean?" And he goes, oh, "If you put French windows on a house, on a council house, it's still a shit house." And then he help, offers to carry her fish tank home, and she's walking along. He goes, "Oh, where'd you live?" And she goes, "Oh, just around the corner with my boyfriend." He goes, "Fuck off!" Oh, yeah, and throws the fish it. on the floor. Yeah, <laughs> that's where it comes from. Raquel Welsh and. Uh, Catherine Zeta Jones in the, in the second row. Yeah. Attack of the 50 foot yeah. woman. Very yeah. dominant at the front. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen it. Fuck. And so I've Back seen row. That. Scarlett Johansson on the blind side. Pamela Anderson at seven. Good ball carry. She'd never get over the ball. Well, well, she'd be no, off the floor. You wouldn't be able to do that. I've gone Julia Roberts at eight. Kick her legs back there. She wouldn't, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she wouldn't have to worry about being a yeah. four. Yeah. Keep it clean. Julia Roberts at eight. Like Andy Ripley. Do you remember Andy Ripley? Yes. Thank Chloe you. looked like Andy Ripley when um, 
Oh no, that's which one? Sorry, the... I don't think you should be saying Chloe looked like Andy Ripley. <laughs> yeah, is Andy Ripley the weird little one from that's now a, wo- uh, 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 no, a he, woman? He died about eighteen months ago. Oh. It's one of the English. Oh race. shit! I'm thinking of that guy. Who was that guy who went to Antiques Roadshow? The little nerdy kid that's now transitioned into a a woman. Oh yes, um, um, Andy. That's Pitt. definitely not Andy Ripley. He's like one of England's. <laughs> no, greatest I know that it's now. I know time. that now. But it's a thing called Andy Pip. It's not Andy Pip. It's someone. There's someone that Chloe. Used Culturally, to like. you are you and I are miles <laughs> apart. <here. laughs> Of course, miles I think, apart. Of course I think we like, knew that before. It's like you're at the, the, the you know the gout it's show. Funny. You're at the gout show, and I'm at you know Pizza Hut. That's how far we are no, apart. You're, yeah. you're, in, you're in the box. Yeah, yeah you're, you're, yeah, you're a wimpy. Box, yeah. You're a wimpy. I'm 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 in hoist. Audrey Hepburn at nine, absolute ankle snapper, classy, graceful. Bo Derek at ten. Who? <laughs> Who? Bo De- perfect ten. Yes, I Dudley know the Moore. Movie, but I love Dudley Moore. It's, right, it's ten. Just, it's uh, just showing. One, Arthur's one of my favourite movies. Right, so it's just showing you a culture. Do a bit of Google. Problem. I've got a quick back three of Margot Robbie, Bridget Bardot, and Elizabeth Taylor. You just thrown a couple. You, you smattered some modern people in there. Mm. Just a bit. One, cool. Margot Robbie, yeah. Bridget Bardot, and Elizabeth Taylor aren't exactly the is, present. That's his laminated fifteen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Elizabeth <laughs> current, oh, currently, and actually he'd knock them in as they look like <laughs> they are no, now. No. Grace Jones at twelve. Hard running lines with Meryl Streep running lovely arcs at thirteen from the Deer Hunter. <laughs> I can't work with you He's people. I cannot loser. work with you people. He's such a loser. Can we find someone <laughs> with some culture and some culture? I can hear your petty farthings being delivered, mate. Just get on it and bugger off. You're not even on the right planet here. You're not, honestly. It's, it's pretty disgraceful. Yeah, it's pretty it's disgraceful. disgraceful. Right. I don't understand. Okay, I'm going to hand just, in my notice like, what, off about you know, this. You, <laughs> just stick to holding Just find some young gamer just, who just sit here and sort of talk modern to cultural young references. Gamer. <laughs> you just you thrown that in the bag. What's 2019? Video games. I'm going to go home for a massive game of... Charades, chess, chess. Yes. Cluedo. 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 Um, checkers. Checkers with a che- oh, backgammon. That's oh, what you yeah. play. I do play backgammon. Of course you do. Yeah. It's just as if I don't think you do. Backgammon, fencing. This is, this, backgammon's this is, a good game. It Wait, is a good game. Thank you. Thank you. When someone had an argument with you. See, you, you are far more aligned to, to me than you will pretend oh, in front you, of youth of today. <laughs> when you had an argument with someone, crusty, do like you me. challenge them to a duel? Like, do you Marcus of Queensbury? Yeah. yeah. No, 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 you don't, you don't fisticuffs because yeah. you don't do that. You're like, take 10 pages. He gets his glove out of his pocket. Yeah, slaps you. Yes. And then you just pistol. Okay. Either pistol or you with the steel. You're like the Duke of Wellington from Blackadder who uses a little cannonet. <laughs> Thank you for choosing the cannonette. You're like that, stuffing it in. About time you did as well. <laughs> <laughs> been a while, actually. Yeah, no doubt you're Do married. You, well, yeah. yeah, well, welcome to the world. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. Wait till the, pit, wait till the pitter patty of tiny feet <laughs> yeah. arrived. James. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I've said that. I mean, we get asked that question all the time. What when you're doing Daily Mail sidebar of shame? How dare you? Yeah. How what did you do the other day? Bella magazine. Oh yeah, pathetic. <laughs> you are a disgrace. Pathetic. pathetic. Oh, sorry. No wonder you're retired. Uh, was it ty- was it House and Country, or whatever it's called? What do you mm. read? Hound, ha- hound and Horse and Hound. Horse and Hound. Horse and Hound, Hound. Horse and Hound didn't want to talk or, about my cookbook. Or Country yes. Life. Yeah, Country Life magazine. The only things you purchase. House and Garden. In between your tweed wardrobe and your snuff box. This has been really personal, yeah. actually, this week. It's yeah. my snuff box. You got a little snuff. Yeah. yeah, it's not a metaphor for something. It's like <laughs> snuff. Yeah, but you do probably take snuff, don't you? Have done. Filet mignon for dinner every evening. I inhaled hashish. <laughs> In the words of Alan Partridge. Yeah. In the words of Alan Partridge. Yeah. You probably could visit an opium den with all your other posh mates. A bit like out of like Dorian Gray or Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Era. Dorian? Dorian Gray. <laughs> Dorian Gray. Dorian Gray. Dorian. Dorian's wife. I know Dorian. Dorian's wife. Right. Yeah. Imagine there's a picture somewhere of Tyndall looking amazing. Uh, Valentine's Day on Thursday. Are you doing anything exciting? Yeah. I can't tell you what it is though because you'll listen but I'm um, yeah, sorting something out. I have sorted something out as well, but I've got to competition. It's, You're going to cash in the check, aren't you? The, the well, time. I am going to cash in the check. I know that J- I've brought this because Haskell will like it. Um, so this arrived. We were talking the other day about the weird mail that Zara receives. Oh, and Tins has gone so through the, uh, the she's intro. She's already got some psycho Valentine's cards, but then oh. someone sent her a check for $10 trillion. Genuine bank. Um, the bank is called Chevy Chase. Yu Lang Chen yeah. has sent and I, Princess I Googled, Sara. I g- hold it Googled, up to the camera. I Googled it is the address. Genuinely. And, I, and I've Googled the bank. That. It is there in could, that place. Can you? Can we actually try and... Ca- I mean, I imagine if you could cash that in. Well, I'm literally cashing this in now because I can't get a game when I'm about to retire, so I could do with 10 million. 10 trillion. 10 trillion. 10 trillion. 10 trillion. <laughs> trillion dollars. Yu Lang he, Chen. He clearly felt like he hadn't given enough, so then he followed it up with a check for one cent. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah, have saying. you checked this for anthrax or some other <laughs> chemical thing? And then he, he sent me 
the Afghanistan Bank, 10,000 Afghanis. Are you going on holiday to Afghanistan anytime? Uh, anytime oh, soon, at the moment, probably, yeah. When Where I googled it, it was 104 pounds. Apparently, <laughs> Afghanistan's got the best potassium, isn't it? Oh, no, that's um, Kazakhstan. <laughs> and then, I'm, sure, yeah. I'm sure you could get a sort of, so of PR I've, out there what for I've a done is set up a, a, for her Valentine's, is set up the, she had a card that said, You will be mine. I will, I will make you mine. I've set her up with a date with him, yeah. Wow. Sure. This is like, this is, this is um, Indecent Proposal times a thousand. Well, if, if there's a trillion dollars in that bank he, account. He, he's genuinely written $10 trillion, 400 to the power of 100 only. <laughs> As if some fucker's <laughs> going to cross it out and write more. You've given us all the money, mate. I love, I love sticking Pretty only on a cheque. Yeah. I know. It's a sort of statement. Yeah, but normally when you're writing £25 only and I'm giving it something like tins, you know he'll scrub <laughs> it out and write something else. $10 trillion. $10 trillion. Who are, Pretty sure they can't go. I'm not being funny, but if you want to get a bit, mate, I'll do it for $10 trillion. <laughs> Oh, because I was remembering the story, the old classic emails where you get, I've, oh, got, yeah. I've got 10 million locked in a bank, but I need $500 to... Didn't you say yes to one of those? No, nah, I did no, a video did. on it. Have you, ever, have you ever read Danny Wallace's The Yes Man? No. Oh, uh, I've, I've heard it, because that movie's book. based on it, isn't it? With yeah. Jim Carrey. Yeah. We just said yes to everything. Yeah. I've done that my whole career. Have you not seen the amount of stuff I'm doing yeah. off the field? Doesn't I just say, yes, 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 yes. I'm just going to make sure I keep this. Yeah, don't so lose those. I, I reckon you Imagine guys have um, cash got $10 trillion, and that is some genuine cash. I want you to have a happier... I want you to arrive in a better mood next week. Okay. Can we, can we arrange that? Well, I can't guarantee it. We'll, okay. see, how the, we'll see how the feedback is like from, from this week's show. That's it for this week. What are you doing? You didn't say what you're doing, Valentine's. Uh, still time. Let's sort something out. Where would, where would, where would really posh people go for a Valentine's Day? Corinthian Hotel. Know, Ch- I, where's the go-to in Chiswick? Do you, you, would, do you go to Corinthian and have like quail's eggs? Do you dip quail's I was, eggs into I was in, I was in carriages salt. last night. Delicious. Mm. What do they have? Little, what are the, la- little langham for you. I would yeah, thought, delicious. Yeah. Langoustines for the wife. L- Langoustine. Lang- oh. Langoustine. I'll have a point. Langoustine. You're with right, Trev. Yeah. I, I, was, I was in there on last Monday, actually. Are we? Because uh, what is he? Michelle Rue's got a restaurant in there. He comes Lanes, for, yeah. I prefer the lanes for. <laughs> Producer Sai saying, literally rap. <laughs> Tell Producer Sai if he wants to come out here, we're going to fill him in. Like, <laughs> we're having a chat. We didn't talk one bit about England. Just like you know, they played really well. Mm-hmm. So. He says now you're retired. He's not quite as frightened of you anymore. So he'll be out in a second. <laughs> well, I've got nothing to lose, have I? Literally. <laughs> That's it for this week. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to the House of Rugby and making us the biggest rugby show out there. Apparently, we are. Well, are we hugely appreciative? Yeah, massively. Yeah. Thanks so much for listening. I thought it was only Chloe and my parents were listening, but that's <laughs> it. It's nice to know we're, we're doing all right. I think we are a YouTube show, I'm as you know. Sure, my podcast as well. Have a clue on how to download the podcast. Please leave us a review, what? as it really helps. Don't forget to download and watch our new boxing show, which is TKO with Carl Frampton. And don't forget the boys don't cry. With Russell Kane returns next do Tuesday for series two. They do kick him in the nuts. <laughs> they do. <laughs> I think you're getting quite close to it, actually. Perhaps you should go on Russell's show and lie down. And Do you know who you... I've just figured out who you remind me of. On that bombshell, oh, no, 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 it's time to say goodnight to James Haskell Wait, and Mike Tendall. We'll George see you next week. Blackadder. Goodbye for now. George from Blackadder, you are. <laughs> <laughs> he gets used as a toast rack at school with a hot crumpet from behind. You've been watching the House of Rugby on Joe, together with Guinness. Drink responsibly. Visit drinkaware.co.uk for the facts.